Hello again, Struck Club. October and its many releasing games are almost upon us. And um, as you know, I like doing those videos, the Struck List videos, where I showcase various games that have something in common. This Struck List special is dedicated to not so known, not so popular um, underdog action RPGs. I've uh, shortlisted 10 action RPGs that did not make the cut in my high profile games video. Um, meaning I was not maybe as excited to play them, but I still think they, they have uh, a ton of potential to be hits that some of you might enjoy. The be, to be the underdogs, hidden gems of uh, action RPGs this month. So I hope you enjoyed this list, buckle up and let's go. I will start with the game I'm most excited about, The Last Hero of Nostalgia. Um, it has a downloadable playable demo on Steam. It's coming on the 19th of October 2022, developed by Over the Moon, published by Code Sync. Uh, keep in mind, after this game, I will be going in chronological order. This game will be the exception to kick things off. So. The Last Hero of Nostalgia is a satirical action adventure brought to life by a twisted and wicked tale, featuring hard but fair combat, full character customization with asterisk here, unique battle armor and engaging narrative mechanics rich in war. Nostalgia plunges you into almost certain death. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, it is interesting. Um, the world of video games is collapsing backwards into a mysterious pixelation with every particle of fidelity bleeding away. Oblivion seemingly awaits even our most cherished gaming memories, but as the lighting dims and flames diminish with the world on the brink of extinction, hope emerges to fight back. As the most hideous pixelated hero to ever spawn in nostalgia, you must fight through an army of its mindless inhabitants while being jeered by a cynical narrator who despises your very existence. Featuring hard but fair combat, the fans of the game will relish along with full character customization, unique battle armor and engaging narrative mechanics rich in war. The last hero of nostalgia's twisted and wicked tale is prepared to send you headfirst into almost certain death around its every vertex. Set in a world cerebrate I'll start again. Set in a world celebrating video game nostalgia, the last hero of nostalgia features hard but fair souls like exploration and combat combined with a twisted wicked tale told by a cynical narrator. I mean, they're repeating themselves here, but I'll say it again. Play together through, um, through online co-op and brave the pixelization together. Uncover various suits of armor and weapons, each with their own unique lore and attributes. And yes, I've noticed, and you probably have already seen it in the video footage I've shown, um, that uh, our hero is a pixelated stick man, but uh, he has some nice, amazingly looking 3D armor, and eventually you get so fully geared up that you can't even see the stick man behind the armor in some of those scenes. The enemies seem fun, the boss fights seem fun, um, I wonder how the wood and item stats would be, whether there's going to be nice um, customization in that regard. But um, there's most likely going to be some skills uh, that you improve. I mean, it's a, it's an RPG, so probably there will be some sort of skill progression. Um, um, I can't wait to, to, to maybe try the demo when I find some time, because um, uh, it seems like it would be fun to, to play this demo alongside some other demos. Um, Near the, the next Steam Next Fest coming very, very soon. From here on, we're moving in chronological order. 1428 Shadows over Silesia. Releasing on the 4th of October 2022 um, as a fully released game. There is a demo right now on Steam. I strongly recommend testing it if it looks like your kind of game. Keep in mind, it is stacked as difficult. So, Expect the two fists up your butt um, difficulty in this game um, if it has this, uh, this stack. Medieval Europe is in the middle of religious upheaval and many a preacher predict the imminent end of the world. Immerse yourself in a dark fantasy story with true historical events in the background. You'll be facing intricate puzzles, challenging battles and cunning stealth. Um, you experience everything from the point of view of the two main characters, Heineck, a grumpy 
her side, Hetman, who doesn't hesitate to swear or mess around with anything. And water. A hospitaler knight, a man of good education and manners, who stands alongside his brethren in the front line of the Silesian defense. Each has their own motivation and views of the world around them, and different equipment and abilities. Their fates will soon become intertwined. Will they face one another, weapon in hand, or forge a fragile alliance to stand shoulder to shoulder against a far worse enemy? There will be challenging puzzles, and the original puzzles you will come across on your dangerous journey will most definitely be tough. Classic adventure games of the 1990s were a big inspiration. You will have to take advantage of your surroundings, look for objects, obtain information, and solve puzzles uh, or encoded messages. Some problems can be solved in multiple ways, or they can be uh, cleverly worked around. You also have a chance to sneak in the shallow. Sometimes you have to blend into the shadows and sneak past enemies to avoid being detected. Following their patrol routes and habits will help you find the best path and you will be able to see their line of sight um, with, uh, within red. The combat system is easy to understand but it takes practice to fully master it. Remember one thing, being outnumbered is a problem. If three or more opponents attack you at the same time, you will die. The key is to take advantage of their mistakes. Wait for the right moment and then attack. You will face not just knights, villagers and robbers, but also various supernatural beings who are not to be underestimated. In the game you will move around on foot as well as on horseback. You will visit various real as well as fictitious places in medieval uh, Silesia. You will plunder villages, doggedly defend the city walls, and explore places such as secret dungeons, abandoned mines, or forbidden parts of mon monasteries. The action often takes place on the ground, in the rain or at night, which serves to amplify the dark atmosphere and focus, which is mostly placed on the contrast of light and shadow. There's also hidden coins. You will have the opportunity to search for two kinds of hidden coins. Only the best of the best will be able to collect them all. Not only will you fill your wallet with them and unlock unique achievements, but you can also occasionally use them to progress through the story. And it says that the game is fully blind accessible. There is more info on blind.shadows1428.com. Um, this link um, is also on the, on the Steam page. No More Heroes 3. Developed by Grasshopper Manufacture Inc. Published by Exceed Games and Marvelous um, USA and Inc. Travis Touchdown is back, baby. The Otaku Assassin takes up his trusty beam katana once more to swash his way to the top of the galactic superhero rankings and save the world in the w latest entry in the No More Heroes series. And yes, it is a long-running franchise. It has uh, um, two uh, versions, uh, two games before that one, as well as another one that's maybe I don't know. Um, a side story, so there's like three more games at least that I could find on the developer website before this one. And it looks fun. It looks like a nice third person um, kind of um, action RPG um, semi shooter beat em up um, game. It's a 3D game and it has been released on Switch and it's uh, pending um, now. Um, um, the release on the 11th of October 2022 for Steam and the 6th of October for PlayStation and Xbox. Um, I'm not sure whether 6th of October is the Japanese release or whether it's uh, global because I could only find it in the, in the Japanese website of the game, um, this one, in Japanese trailer. So since I can't translate it, uh, I'm not sure whether it says that it's just for Japan or whether it's a glo global release date for PlayStation and Xbox. No more heroes three falls, the Otaku Assassin Travis touchdown as he takes up his trusty beam katana, uh, as I said. The legendary assassin um, returns to the Garden of Madness. Now he must make it to the top of the galactic superhero rankings in order to stop the evil prince F.U. and his nine alien underlings from taking over Earth. Experience the action of at 60 FPS and full HD right now. Um, Rack up combos with Travis's beam katana and experience hack and slash action like never before. Ranking battles return on a galactic scale. Out of this world boss 
fights await Travis as he faces off a slew of wicked alien superheroes. In brackets here, superheroes. There's more to see than just Santa destroy this time around. Upon Travis's latest ride, the Demzamtiger, um, Demzamtiger and Burn Rubber through four all new locations. Each one is packed with battle and volunteer missions to help you save up for those pricely galactic ranking fights. So yeah, a lot of blood, gore, violence, uh, strong language and a lot of suggestive themes is what you could expect. It's that kind of satirical game. Uh, if you like satirical um, games, well, this one is a lovely uh, suggestion for October 11th, 2022. Hollow Lands. It is an open world procedurally generated RPG adventure. Explore a world full of monsters, harvest resources and craft unique items. An adventure awakes. 11th of October 2022, developed and published by Revolutionary Interactive, which makes it a true indie game. Early access will be starting uh, on 11th of October, so um, it won't be um, the finished final product, so it will be rough here and there. There might be bugs and glitches, and there might be missing content and features that will add um, that will be added eventually. But there is a downloadable demo, so if you're interested before purchasing the game, you can try the demo as we speak. Regarding the features, open world exploration, procedural generated world with multiple biomes, RPG mechanics and systems, harvesting resources, crafting, building and farming systems, numerous weapon classes, numerous magic types. Um, so I think it would be fun for many people um, to try. You can chop down trees, mine rocks and ore and find unique items to help you along your journey. Using the resources that you find, you can craft powerful weapons and items as you explore the world. You will come across winding cave systems and treacherous dungeons full of monsters for you to defeat. A very nice uh, 2D kind of pixel um, art style. And I like the contrast, the lighting glowing effects um, have an amazing contrast to, to, the, to the dimly lit uh, world uh, over um, that uh, we are seeing on the, on the footage. Um, that's on our screens. Shadow Heroes is the next um, title I'm bringing to your attention. 11th of October 22 um, is, uh, 2022 is the release date for Shadow Heroes and developed and published by Tower Games. So another true indie game. Shadow, Hero is, um, no, Shadow Heroes is an act game with roguelike elements. Keep in mind, I think the developers... Um, are, are from China, the game will release in English and simplify Chinese's interface and subtitles. So some of the descriptions that I'm gonna read, which are very uh, short, uh, might be not so well translated. Different roles, different characteristics. The game contains six characters with different styles, each of which has its own in distinctive characteristics and different attack methods. There are random elements. The game is full of random elements, random events and random treasure boxes so that you can have a different experience every time. And that pretty much sums up the description on Steam. But let's say a little bit based on what I see on the screen. You can see that you have that hero and as you complete stages you get to pick different upgrades and boosts. Um, and there's enemies coming from both sides even though it's like a side-scrolling kind of um, game. Um, it's not just one direction from where the, um, the enemies come and you just fight stage by stage and uh, and then get upgrades um, get to choose from randomly generated upgrades as you complete stages simple yet very effective way of handling the game and since you have multiple classes each having their own different play style and experience it seems like a lovely game to give a try um, once it's out next up we have a game that unfortunately doesn't have a trailer. Um, I tried looking everywhere for some footage of the game. I couldn't find it, so screenshots will have to do. Undercraft is the name of the game, releasing on the 12th of October 2022. Developed and published um, by Party Entertainment, so another true indie game. Create your world in this sandbox game where you can dig, build, climb, explore, fight and farm. Have a different experience in a day or night adventure. Explore a procedurally generated world alone or with friends. So it's an open world survival craft game with kind of interesting voxelized graphics. 
there's the online co-op and you can if you want pvp as well so kind of think of it kind of similar type of uh, game to v rising except instead of isometric you have third person view and camera um find different types of enemies during the day and night be careful some enemies become more dangerous on certain nights um, you can find caves on the map and collect rare resources to craft you can explore the world cut trees and find resources you can create your world procedurally discover new lands places explore different types of biomes with different types of animals and different items in them Create buildings, decorate inside or outside your house with everything you want. You can even destroy the houses of other people and other players you find on the map. It looks like an interesting title. Um, as long as they don't overprice it, I can see um, it doing okay. Uh, it won't uh, outsell probably the rising because they probably don't have um, that good of a marketing team as Stunwalk Studios do. But I think it has a lot to offer, nevertheless. As long as it is not too slow, progressing and grindy, I think there will be a lot of people um, that can enjoy this game with the right type of marketing in the right places. And now comes something that uh, has a ton of potential to become a hidden gem hit. Of Blades and Tales is a turn-based RPG that is action-oriented but rewards a thoughtful approach. Explore a fantastic land populated by different animal tribes. Follow the main story or hunt for treasures in ancient ruins and mysterious dungeons. Develop your character and gain powerful equipment. Releasing on the 19th of October 2022 as an early access game. There is a demo right now you can download and play on Steam, so keep that in mind. Developed by Felix Waukeo um, and published by Pineapple Works. And um, it seems like a very fun um, a 2D pixel art um, action RPG where you, where you take the role of a protagonist who is a fox. A fox who walks like a human on two feet, so fox like a beast, uh, beast kin maybe. The game has a nice um, system of stats, strength, intellect. Uh, Dexterity, perception, willpower, vitality. There's various different rarities of item: white, green, uh, blue, um, uh, pink, uh, orange, and so on. Um, there's elemental damages, uh, spiritual damages, physical damages, and so on. Um, so there, there will be build diversity in the game. Um, from what it seems, um, there will be a diversity of enemies, and it seems like a fun game. A turn-based RPG that is action-oriented but rewards a thoughtful approach. So it's kind of like an action RPG, but the fighting is turn-based with an action approach. I guess that's what they mean. Discover a fantastic land populated by different animal tribes. You play Rake, a clever member of the tribe of foxes. A chain of unfortunate events involves you in a quest of vital importance to all the peace-loving creatures of the realm. You will have to leave your home village and explore the world to become strong enough to stand up to evil. In other words, there will be a main storyline, but it's still in the making. The gameplay is inspired by classic hack and slays like Diablo and turn-based RPGs like Tales of My Isle um, or Stone Shard. However, there is no permadeath in this game. Your progress is always saved once you enter a new area. The war is inspired by the classic point-and-click adventure uh, Inherit the Earth. As you explore the land, you gain experience and unlock new abilities. Not all inhabitants will be friendly to you. Some will help you with information. Others are only interested in trading and still others will get in your way. Improve your equipment and collect useful resources in the environment to have a decisive advantage in battle. So turn-based combat that allows you for quick action or strategic planning. An open world with lots of places to discover. A fresh animalistic setting in a vibrant um, pixel art look. Procedural generated dungeons and caves, a main storyline and various side quests. Classes, character development with many abilities to unlock. Equipment of different qualities and unique items with special powers. Huge, uh, not huge, hunt. Hunt giant bugs uh, or gather herbs and other useful resources. Many enemy types with different skills that may require tactical decisions. Join factions to gain access to even more refined skills and equipment. Trade with rats and other profit-seeking animals. 
multiple game modes if you prefer a relaxed or challenging experience and more to come. The game is still in early development and more details will follow apparently. So most likely it will be either a late alpha or an early beta that you get to play on the 19th of October 2022 when early access starts. And now moving on to Valkyrie of Phantasm. Which is an interesting third person shooter uh, where you control those Valkyrie girls that kind of fight, they fly. Um, there's PvP, there's uh, PV, there's multiplayer and so on. Uh, control characters from the Toho Project series in this shooting action game featuring high speed aerial versus combat. Dan Maku battles faster than you've ever seen will unfold in the skies of Gensokyo and as you use your mobility to dodge countless bullets flying at you. Um, it will be an early access release um, on the 23rd i think they changed the release date but um but yeah it says 23rd um, of october 2023 um so interesting uh the story a meteorite suddenly falls to gensokyo a crack appears in its golden egg-like surface and small droplets of light emanate from the inside which then scatter in all directions eventually they arrive in the hands of gensokyo's most powerful one of these lights reaches reimu hakurei it surrounds her, transforming into what looks like a suit of armor. A name echoes in her head, and she proclaims, A Valkyrie arm! Sensing the beginnings of an incident, she sighs and looks off in the direction the light came from. She floats up and into the air, and a moment later she's already gone, leaving not behind but a thin red trail. I'd rather not uh, do too much of this spoiler um overview of the of the um, of the setting of the game but let's go to the to the features the game system like for example basic actions you have attack uh which is a melee attack you have shoot which uh, blast bullets can be rapid fire um uh, you can cast spells uh, which is a powerful bullet pattern spell um, you can do step performing a quick evasion you can um, boost dash which is fire at high speeds and you can guard um to put up a barrier to deflect attacks there are special actions such as Excel Drive, Temporary Power Up, Increased Movement Speed, Motion Speed and Power of All Attacks. There are stat increased changes uh, depending on the number of charges in the Drive Gauge. And Level 1 to Level 3 plus Max Level Max. I'm not sure what they mean Level 1 to Level 3 plus Level Max, but okay. It has Burst Effects. Excel Drive spell is a powerful spell but only usable during Excel Drive. Then there's an ultimate spell, an extremely powerful spell, only usable at max level. There's charge melee attack, breaks guard and deals knockback. There's blitz attack, a mid-range charge attack, side attack, a high speed um, water of flank, at flank attack, step side to side attacking from the side. Then back strike, back steps and then attacks. And then there is boost dash attack, a powerful strike out of a boost dash that deals knockback. There's also steel, no steel. Step cancel. Steps to cancel an attack action. And you can battle with uh, one to four people. Two plus is required for online play. It seems fun and interesting. So developed by Area Zero, published by PlaySim. There is a game that I told you about some time ago. The Unliving. Be a Necromancer. It's finally got a release date and it's this Halloween. 31st of October 2022, developed by Rocket Brush Studio, published by Team 17 Digital. Um, the game will be coming as an early access title. Um, the release date was pushed, uh, but uh, hopefully the game is in a good enough state to, to, um, to launch as an early access title um, this Halloween. Raise the Dead as a fearsome necromancer in the dark world of the unliving. Lead your undead armies into the endless fight in this roguelike, roguelite action RPG game. Well, action RPG game, um, the G is for game, so I don't know why they have game there. But anyways, burn cities to ash with devastating magic spells, play epic bosses and turn your enemies into morbid servants. The realm of the living has been corrupted to its core and a storm is coming to change the world order. This storm is you, a mighty necromancer, a sorcerer who denies death and leads the legions of the dead. 
Clerics and wards hope to hide uh, behind high walls, but there is no stronghold to cover them from your wrath. Smite hundreds of those standing in your way and turn them into your tools on the way to a greater purpose. Turn Living is a dynamic roguelite action RPG with strategic elements. Raise the undead, use numerous spells and explore a mystical world, all realized with darkly extravagant pixel art. Turn enemies into your undead army. Each foe and foe can be resurrected and added to your army to create unlimited legions of the dead. These reanimated creatures have their own unique abilities, such as the undead priest whose blessings uh, in life will now curse your enemies in death. Crush everyone in your way. Only some of the uh, living are helpless uh, victims. The rest can retaliate against your forces. They hold the line move in large groups and wield powerful abilities too. They cherish their lives and will not fall easily, so unleash hell as the undead wards to bring them to their knees. Conquer uncharted lands. This world is randomly generated for each run and is richly populated with an array of creatures, artifacts, secret rooms and deadly traps. Each part of the world is occupied by a variety of living inhabitants. Invade villages and slay feeble peasants to rejoice your army or engage in a desperate fight to the death in the swamps against formidable foes. Unravel the mysteries of necromancy, collect cryptic notes, force answers out of your enemies and study the writings on the ancient artifacts to gather the lost memories of the necromancer piece by piece as you reveal the nature of his immortality secret of his phylactery companion and find out the grim truth about the supreme hierarchies of the church. Battle epic bosses, the powerful creatures of this shallowy world will do all they can to stop you. Each boss has a unique fighting style and set of abilities, meaning deafness in combat and strategic thinking will be crucial in emerging victorious from these grueling encounters. Die and rise again. The ability to deny death itself is the greatest secret of the necromancer. Another mortal strike is merely a setback for him. Take a lesson from your death and don't let your enemies catch you the same way twice. Coat of Babel Roguelite, overpowered wizard simulator and dungeon crawler. Play hundreds of cultists using the power of ancient cards and your magical arsenal. Choose from a diverse set of cards to create unique, game-breaking builds and shoot down the horde trying to stop you from climbing um, uh, and it cuts off uh, the text here because of Steam's new um, changes. So releasing in October 2022, most likely, um, this, this date could be just, um, just a, a fewer date, just a temporary placeholder date, but if it does release in October 2022, hopefully we know the exact date soon. It's a true indie game developed and published by um, Menacing Aura Games. And it will be a release, um, an early access release in October 2022. Um, there was a demo, the demo was removed. Ah, oh, never mind, I think it's still there. Uh, it just doesn't show as a demo, it's just, um, it just is a separate, uh, separate game title called Coat of Battle Provoke. So you could play the Coat of Battle Provoke, which came on the 15th of August, if you... Um, if you want to, to give it um, a try. About the game. An upcoming Horde uh, Survivors and Dungeon Crawler game. Select your mighty steampunk witch or wizard. Get the ancient cards of uh, power and slaughter the Horde of evil who is preventing you from climbing the Tower of Babel. Fast-paced Horde Survival gameplay. Play as one of the legendary sorcerers. Get magic cards to upgrade your steampunk wizard's arsenal. Zany synergies, quick sessions, unlock card boosters to get even more cards of power and discover new builds each run. In this roguelite arena survival game, the randomized cards you get change how you play the game completely. Become a thunder mage, control gravity and much more. 60 plus cards to collect and upgrade. The more cards you have in your deck, the more their effect combine and enable you to unleash the fury of ancient magic. Play as one of the legendary sorcerers. There are many characters to choose from each run. And yes, it looks like an amazing um, 2D pixel um, 
uh, suggestion to those of you who want something that most likely won't be overpriced. From the looks of it, this this game probably would be um, uh, priced under five bucks, no more than ten. But uh, normally, games like those, the um, the vampire survivors kind of type of games, um, they don't um, they don't go super high in the prices, and that's what uh, keeps them. Um, um, keeps them popular because they're not overpriced and they offer that kind of uh, whoop that might become boring quickly but um, you can keep returning to it to try new weird builds thanks to the RNG-ness of the game. To get notified when I upload more content like this one or other builds and guides for water and not so water games you can subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out on notifications. As well as uh, keep in mind there's something called memberships on YouTube which lets you be uh, a paying member for my channel to get access to perks such as emotes and badges made by me as well as the option to get one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring for the very basics of Adobe Photoshop, Premiere and After Effects and memberships can be cancelled at any time if you no longer want to be a member. Uh, thanks for watching all the way until the end struck up, keep it cool, until next time and goodbye.